In 2010, Games Workshop released three books called The Heraldry and Uniforms of Certain Armies. We had The Empire, The Skaven and The High Elves. But since then, these books have become incredibly rare and hard to find. But luckily, I managed to get my copy, The Skaven one of course, the best one you can get, in a second-hand bookshop for normal price and in perfect condition because they were simply just getting rid of old game and stock and that's when my luck kicked in and I managed to pick this up but what does this book offer? It's, it's, it's based on the visual side of armies there's no army stats in here, there's no points, there's no weapon profiles or anything it focuses on as it says the uniforms, the coloration, the shield designs, the banners, the iconography everything like that it goes through, it ranges from warlord clans to the greater clans. This book is full of information and the colours and the look of certain clans. So each week I'm going to go through each army in this or each clan in this and we'll have a look at what their colours are, their profile about them and it's full of illustrations as well which are really good to look at. So what's the first army that we're going to be looking at? So the first clan that's actually in the book is one of my favourite clans from this game. It's Clan Asian. So let's have a look and see what it says here. Clan Nation is by far the most villainous of the Skaven clans. That's actually saying a lot. If they're, if they're saying this is the the most villainous of the Skaven, then these guys must be pretty bad. The mysterious clan trains stealthy spies and murders assassins for hire. Clan Nation has eyes everywhere, and its daily operatives are scattered throughout the Under Empire, as well as secreted about to the cities of the surface dwellers. For the right price, the black clad agents of Eshin will steal any information, commit any act of sabotage or slay any rival required. Considering the treacherous scheming and paranoid nature of the Skaven, it is no wonder that Clan Eshin has become so powerful indeed. Clan Eshin provides an unseen force what which the Council of Thirteen and other powerful Skaven maintain or gain their position of power. Within the highly feared caverns of unyielding shadow, the Clan Eshin district, the Clan Eshin district, deep down in the belly of Skaven Blight, treaty packs are claw marked, and the doom of many rivals is assured. So these guys are the spies. They're the stealthy assassin. If you want to say maybe they're the Batman of the, of the Warhammer world. These are my favourite, and um, for some reason they haven't brought out new models for these for so long. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. So, uh, let's have a look at what their banner is. So the banner, the first one, it has this, the, the hand holding the dagger. Very, it's just three colours, black, white and red. The red have the markings. Um, it's pretty plain, it's what you'd probably expect. If it, It'd be surprised if these guys did go around with a banner. But if they did, darkness is a must. Um, the other banners is just like a dark, a black and grey one with other symbols on it. Um, and the other one is white and black with a little bit of red in it. And the daggers are very similar to looking like knives. They have the symbols next to them, which are knives all tied together to make up the shapes. Claw and daggers, claw and dagger are poison blade symbols are common motives amongst Clan Asian Night Runners and Gutter Runner Death Squads. Ooh, I like that, Death Squads. A simple but effective reminder of what await those who dare oppose them. Claw and dagger and paws and blade symbols. Ooh, so that's what them two symbols are. That's pretty interesting. That's really good. Um, then we have a look at the Assassin of Clan Asian coat of the blades in exotic violent toxins. If the initial wounds don't kill the foe, the poison will soon. So they're known for poisoning their weapons and um, being stealthy as well as throwing stars. Uh, which we'll look at shortly. But let's have a look at what they're outfitted with. Obviously they have their swords. They have their daggers. But their tails have hooks and blades and everything on them as well. Um, very dark clothing. You have your very dark brown. Kind of a dark blue and black. Some of them have a little bit of dark redness. Um, but they're carried very lightly. It shows here a warp grinder team. Which kind of is a bit surprising. To see in the clan Asian clan. Maybe that's how they get to somewhere. Maybe that's how you could put them into your army. Um, but they look like they'd be very noisy. And look like they could get caught very easily with that. Um, it says here we have the knight leader. He has the blade. 
uh, his tail holding onto the blade and a fighting blade in his normal hand so that's pretty cool very lightly equipped I just need their blades and that's it no shields or nothing with these guys the warriors of Clan Eshin are swathed in dark hooded cloaks that help them blend into the shadows as a stalk to prey uh, this guy has two daggers one guy has a throne knife with a sling in the other arm I like the fighting blades um, they do in the game they do have weeping blades I'm surprised they haven't really shown a weeping blade here but it's very cool uh, let's have a look at these up here the throne stars the death dealing agents of Clan Eshin have a variety of throne stars knives and shurikens to kill their prey many of these are fashioned to resemble skaven runes and all of them are lethally sharp so these guys are pretty badass the models you could you could really do them up to hide in the shadows, running along rooftops and all that. Many of the warriors of Clan Eshin so blacken their blades. Wait a Many of the warriors of Clan Eshin so blacken their blades as not to reflect the light and give them the precision of a potential target. Whoa, that's that's pretty good. I like that idea. They mentioned Debt Runners here. I didn't know Debt Runners were a thing until they came out in in. Uh, the kind of the tower game Warhammer Quest game that I brought out a couple of months ago so that's pretty cool that's really nice to, to see in here as well um, as for markings it really only shows the three banners and the clan dagger and poison blade symbols which you could do up if you had like a couple of uh, spare bits and knives lying around that would be pretty cool but the the thing that these guys seem to have are blades, kind of short ones, not really swords, kind of like daggers, and outfitted in very dark cloak and robes. And I suppose the warp grinder is a pretty good idea to have with these guys. If they're going to get somewhere quickly, they might as well use a warp uh, a warp grinder. Um. So yeah, so that's it for the clan nation. So that was Clan Eshin in the first week of this. Definitely one of my favourite clans. I, you really don't see enough of them, I don't think. They need new models, which will be fantastic. But um, it's going to be a very interesting read going through this book every week. So hopefully you guys like it. Let me know what you think of Clan Eshin. They're probably will be my favourite clan. Definitely to read about. And um, Those sneaky guys, you know. You never know where they're going to be hiding. But let me know what you guys think of Uniforms and Heritage of The Skaven. Definitely a cool book to try and pick up if you can. Um, next week we'll, we will be looking at another clan, so stay tuned for that. Make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.